As we lay everything out and we're getting ready to start this build, one of the first things that uh, I found, I noticed that, remember I told you I thought that the nose was a little wiggly, so I wanted to check that out. Um, this radial engine's pretty beefy. It's got, it's got weight to it. Um, and it looks like they fill it probably for ballast to balance this thing out, which I get. Um, the plugs on the inside right there, those little black bits, can use uh, a little bit more glue on there just to hold that thing nice and sturdy. Again, not a big deal. And then this whole nose section actually is just a huge magnet uh, on two different ends that clicks on should you ever need to get access into this motor. You can just go ahead and pull this whole nose section off. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of glue onto those black things. Not a big deal, but one of the other things that I did want to show you guys, if you look in the inside, there are a couple blind nuts right there that aren't fully seated into the wood. So what does that mean to me? That means that if I can get you guys down here, when we look at those motor mounts right on the inside, this firewall plate is held in with those screws. So we are going to tighten those things up and make sure that our blind nuts are nice and tight. Uh, probably apply a little bit of epoxy to the blind nut on the backside so they don't back out. We don't want this thing to wiggle. Again, just because, and this is, this is a common mistake for a lot of people, just because I buy a plane that can be together in five minutes or 15 minutes, we think that it's flawless. These are little things. Every manufacturer has them. We go over planes as we build them and we make sure things are right. Tightening up some screws isn't a big deal, but if you don't catch it, it could lead to those maiden failures that we blame manufacturers for that we could catch and fix. Um, I've flown a lot of maidens. I've had a lot of good successes. Stuff like this is why. Take your time, look things over, make them right, and we'll move forward in the build. Let's go. All right, so check this out. I brought out the old prop balancer just to check a factory prop the way it comes out of the box like you should with everything. Look at this. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So that's nice. No vibration. What we did here is we went ahead and tightened up all the screws. We're going to fix that. And actually, I am going to follow the directions just as they are laid out here. And it looks to be a little rough. One side is, uh, I guess, Chinese. The other side is in English. And when we look at the color diagram, you're like, oh my God, there's not many steps here. But actually, it's really not that bad. So when you start to read here and then coincide it with the colored pictures, it's funny, all that glue that they give you in the package meant for this plane, I'm going to use foam tack because I prefer uh, foam tack. And believe it or not, if you guys um, look on Amazon, you can find these little tubes, which I find a lot easier to use than one big bottle um, because I'll use this up and throw it out rather than one big bottle that gets a gooey end on it all the time. So anyway, one of the first steps, it's actually kind of ironic, if you will, it says to glue the radial engine in here. Now, I know they already did that for you, but like I said, I, I see mine has a little play or wiggle that I can glue. I'm going to use hot glue on that because the thing is so heavy. That radial engine's pretty stout in there with some weight um, for ballast, like I said. But otherwise, the pictures don't look too bad to follow going through the, the once over. Uh, I don't think this is going to be too difficult to follow, but I want to do it just for you guys. Hot glue. I'm going to put a dab over the screws so that way they don't back out. I am going to put some on the blind nuts on the inside so they don't back out. My motor stays nice and attached. We're going to put a little on there. And to be honest with you, I don't know that I'm ever worried about this coming off. So I think for the point of just having everything on here super sturdy, um, so the prop's not rubbing back here or anything, I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, I think I'm going to just a couple tacks of hot glue just to hold the nose on. So let's get to it. So step one and two are done in a quick recap. Um, we're going to glue on our tidbits so they're glued in and they only really fit in there one way. They only look right one way. 
the uh, horizontal and vertical stabilizers are simply screwed in with two small screws through the bottom. They kind of interlace with each other. The vertical goes down through the horizontal and then it's tongue and groove here and a piece slides in the back. No gluing necessary and I wouldn't glue it in case you ever need to change it. Two screws right there. There is a set screw here to hold in that pretty cool looking little tail wheel right there, which um, I do like the look of that tail wheel. And then around in the front of this thing, we put our nicely balanced propeller on there. And you will see um, there's holes in here for you to put a screwdriver to tighten up the prop hub, but there is also a washer. The washer is not displayed in the, destru in the destructions. The washer needs to go behind here, otherwise you're not going to get this nut tight enough. Um, I did apply a little bit of foam tack glue around in the crease in the nose. I have the motors, uh, the radial engine glued fast to this, but I, I still, it's pretty heavy for just those couple magnets. And all I did was apply a very small run of foam tack all the way around. And the nice part is, is if you ever need to get this off, all you simply got to do is just run a razor knife down along the edge. So it's not too glued in. I glued it on the flat part on each side. So you can do that as well. So far, um, build is very straightforward and easy not overly complicated all right guys building tip so they want you to actually take these wheel pants if you will or strut covers and they want you to glue them into the fuselage right in there here's the problem when your your landing gear goes to bend um, what I'm seeing is going to happen here is this stuff isn't really going to be supported and I have a feeling it's going to wind up, you know, breaking with this. Or if you flatten the gear out and you push it this way, it's going to pop those off of there and then tear out part of the fuselage with it. So what I am going to do is this is where uh, hot glue is your friend. I am going to apply hot glue up these rods. In here so that way this thing moves with the gear and free of the fuselage so that way it stays with where I have more support and all I'm simply going to do there is I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I am going to run a bead right up each side of this thing Got a mess of hot glue in there. Like so. And then just run a little bit right in there to seal her up and i think that would work out better ultimately than applying glue and gluing that thing fast so back to our time lapse don't forget you have to take your wheel collars off to put the wheels on um, one and a half millimeter grub screws in there take your file and on the axles on anything Go ahead and just file a flat spot in them so that way those grub screws have something to really grip against. And the other thing that I like to do, um, just as I slide them on, I'll slide them on, put a drop of hot glue right there and slide them over the hot glue so that actually helps underneath them to prevent them coming loose from vibration. So let's get to it. All right, for the lower wing installation, what I did is I test fit the carbon rod in each wing, made sure it fit together, applied some foam tack in the channel, and you have to do it quickly. Slid the rod in one side, slid it in the other, um, just to make sure that everything stays secure, probably overkill. And then I roughed up in the seam 
where the two pieces meet, I roughed up the foam edge in there and made sure that all the paint was removed where things would touch. Applied foam tack, pushed them together to make a nice seam, and then just applied a couple pieces of duct tape to hold it in place. And you can actually put it in the plane with the duct tape there, but that way the seam is really held together and filled in nicely. Um, I tried putting in some like screws in the holes and trying to use a clamp to hold them together to keep the pressure there But believe it or not the duct tape is more than enough. So we're gonna let this sit overnight and set up I'm pretty happy with the build so far how it's coming along uh, Our wheel fairings are in the nose is on pretty happy with that and uh, It's beginning to look like a plane. So we'll see you guys tomorrow Yo guys, check that out. Um, simple minded, I guess, but I haven't seen those before, see-through servos. It's a shame those are on the lower wing because those are really cool if you'd be able to actually see those outside of here. Oh well, but uh, yeah, pretty neat stuff. So the lower wing is done and mounted on there. Um, pretty simple with four screws. I did like the way I did that assembling at first, um, using the tape, letting it sit overnight, and that mounts right on there. And now it's time to do the top section. So what I've gone and done is um, use some tape to take out the paint where we're gonna have to glue. See the clip next. Clip next. All right. Uh, we also used then an X-Acto knife and just roughed up some of those inside edges in there so that way the glue bonds better. Took a little bit of paint out in the carbon track and we're simply going to install these tubes into the carbon tracks. I'll apply a little bit of glue. We're going to join the wings together in the same fashion that I did the lower wing. And then we use this filler piece that goes into the inside. Time lapse. When you guys go to do your control horns, you can't get it wrong. There's two little dots there. The instructions don't tell you a whole lot about the control horns, but as you see the dots and you see that, they don't line up. If you come over to here, you only have three control horns to put in because the aileron ones are already done for you. So you can look and see the screws and stuff already in there and see how they did that if you needed to as a reference. But the dots will only allow the control horns in there and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drill a, a small hole through there as a pilot and then we are going to use our um, screws to then go down through the foam and attach to the other side of our um, if you will the holders for the horns but uh, you can't go wrong it's not in the directions and I did not find any fuel tubing for any of the clevises so I will find some of that cut it and put those on there um, for this plane it's not super heavy duty so these are going to be adequate for this thing but um, it didn't come with it you know it you could upgrade with clevises and linkage if you want to but i think what's on here is more than ample for this plane it's not a super heavy duty plane uh it's not like it's doing a lot of high g or 3d maneuvers or anything like that so i think these the, the little plastic clevises will be fine but we do need to get some tubing on there as locking devices but let's get the horns put in over there so trying to figure out the screws and stuff that were in here like i said i matched them up with the ailerons up front but they have these longer machine thread screws um, there are six of them in the pack that came with all of those horns. So the horns are installed. I pre-drilled them. I'm going to put those through and then uh, screw them in here to these backing plates. So the instructions aren't real clear there, but the hardware is more than sufficient. All right, guys, so one of the things you want to do before you hook this up, 
Take the time now, put the Blendiderm tape in there. I always position mine so it is right here at the edge, not over the edge of the leading part here. You don't want the air coming over to lift the tape. So it is literally right on the inside. And all I do is I lay it in here and I tack it along that top inside edge first, bend it down and use a straight edge to push it down into the crease and then fold it to seal it. And you can't even tell that stuff is in there, but it'll keep this, this joint strong forever. Um, really helps those hinges out. So we have different um, flying wires. Uh, these pieces, I'm going to assume, are for the tail. And then uh, you got a whole bunch of springs here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm assuming maybe they're for up here. But the longer ones are going to connect here at the fuselage and run to the top of the cabanes. And then the shorter ones are going to run from there, um, it looks like, down if I had to guess. And then these pieces are going to go in the back and the tail. The directions kind of like really fall apart there. Um, it's difficult to understand at this point the brackets, the screws, what exactly screws they want. So we'll try and work it out. Let's go. So these rods are going to go back here on the tail section. There is a um, set of longer rods and shorter rods. So the only way that you're going to actually be able to attach these things is to use the little springs that they gave you. And these springs will hook into there. into that little loop and um, over here and that one feels pretty pretty sloppy so maybe it's the smaller ones that go up here the directions kind of like fall apart at this point so I really don't know what happened with the directions. But like I said to you guys earlier, I, I enjoy the building part here, so I am completely, completely okay with this. i grab myself a pair of needle nose, I guess. I have found, because of my clumsy fingers, I have found some of these smaller pieces a little bit difficult to uh, work with, but that's not their fault. That is my own. So that's the short one. Um, See if we can tilt this. Let's see if the long one here is different. I got nothing for that. What goes there? Oh no, let's go find out. All right, so after much ado, this is this is the way this is going to fare out. Um, the flying wires and the brackets, the, the directions are not good when it comes to this stuff. I really 
my brain couldn't comprehend brackets from the Z's I get, but the rest of it was uh, very just hodgepodge and really wasn't understanding what they talk about. So it's very easy to see these brackets. They got an angle in here. You got to follow the angles. Um, that one angles back a little bit. So those are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I, I put those on the outside of the brackets up here. This one I put in the inside of the brackets here and the outside there. And the reason I did that is because these flying wires, when you start to install them, you actually need that extra little bit of space in there for the tension on the wire. So I'm gonna tighten all these up, but I loose installed everything. So it works. So my recommendation is to do the same loose install. The longer wires are going to go right here. The shorter wires go right here. But this is how I routed mine. I'd prefer by looks that all of that was on the outside, but I can deal with that. That's not a problem. But I found that this thing needed to be on the inside to give me space. Um, the other thing that we've struggled with here is the brackets on the back. And I told you guys that I would give you a review based right out of the directions. And I, I don't see nothing in the directions about this. And here's the problem. Uh, I have no pieces. The pieces weren't put in. You can see the pieces up there that were put in. And these things feel pretty loose. I mean, if you put the shorter ones in up here, then it, it winds up pulling the spring so hard that it starts to bend them. So those have to be longer ones. So I'm assuming the shorter ones when they're down are gonna pull that horizontal stab like this and take the tension out. But the problem is, is I got no anchor points in there. So um, I'm not going to delay this project for those. So we're gonna come up with something. And um, I don't know, maybe something like this sticking out of there I think would be just fine as a bracket. We will, we will make something work. We will model this baby. Let's get to it. So you guys can check out what I did here on my install. As uh, these wires come down for the lights and the wings, we'll just zip tie those and keep that nice and tight there on the inside of those cabanes. And then uh, I cut in some little notches in the inside to run all my wiring through and keep that in there. And that's for um, the lighting control. And the lighting control module tops into an open port the open port on the receiver you can just simply plug in the lighting controller and um, if you wanted to you, you could actually put that on a switch and actually make that switch commanded if you wanted to make sure whatever extra connectors you're not using because um, they do have extras in here that we tape those up and i'm going to just bundle this with a nice piece of tape down below to keep um, my installation clean but this way you're not getting a bunch of wires caught up and stuff in the battery everything is pretty much well kept out of the way and our receivers mounted right here with a nice piece of velcro um, the other thing i'll do is i'm going to tack just a piece of hot glue on each one just to put the strength back in those um, side supports so that way we don't have any issues there All right, guys, we're done putting this thing together with everything but the decals. Let's go through some of the key points to this build, okay? Number one, love the scale flying wires. Looks really good. Took a little bit to figure out. Again, I had covered earlier how I put in the cabanes um, and screwed everything fast there. We have our lights just zip tied in so that way those wires aren't flopping around. We'll show you the inside in a minute. Um, as far as extra pieces go, um, they give you quite a bit. I hope I didn't forget to put them in anywhere, but there's um, several extra screws in each set. Um, nuts, these things are small and hard to deal with at times. That's just 
because of my fingers. It's not because of the hardware or anything else. So they give you they give you some extras in case you drop them, lose them, whatever, which I did. Um, the Y harness for the elevators I chose not to use because I used the receiver big enough to create a mix to put those in. So that item was not needed. The motor assembly, the radial on the front of this thing is um, got a lot of weight to it. It's very heavy and it needs it for this thing to balance. They called for a 2600 milliamp battery. I only had a 2200 and a 4S. This thing is not going to get it anywhere close to the balance. I'm actually running a 4000 all the way front as far as I can get it in the inside. And you can see the size difference in those batteries. This is how much weight is still needed up front to get it at the very aft recommendation, which is realistically right here at this little nub underneath. Um, the build feels solid. Plane feels solid. The wings feel solid. Very light panel wings. So I think this thing ought to be a decent flying plane just based off of weight alone. When we look in the inside of this, um, we could touch on the canopy really quick. I glued those pieces back on. Again, that wasn't a big deal. Um, things to look for on the inside. Again, I tidied my wires up the side so I have room for the battery. These things are always, um, I don't want to say questionable. They're used for a lot of different things and um, have been around for a very long time. The right thing to really do with these is to wrap them in wire and coat them in an epoxy. Uh, so that way they don't ever come apart. I actually did fill mine with epoxy right here in the very front going into the collar. So that way there's never a chance at those sliding. When you want to adjust your clevises, make sure you turn the, the clevises so some of that linkage rod comes through the clevis. And then come in the inside to make your adjustments here and here. Don't out-thread yourself on the clevises in order to make this work because you have plenty of metal up here to make those adjustments. You can see here, um, I made sure that that ESC was tucked all the way down, but my battery is all the way against that firewall, and that just gets me where I need to be. The lighting control module will have both flashing and solid patterns. So if you want one to flash or one of the others to flash, one to be solid, one to flash, or both to be solid, it's up to you. You can change those connectors that we capped off there so that way they're not touching and we talked about that earlier as well. So this battery is gonna go all the way up into the front of that thing in order to get this thing to balance. And then uh, our canopy, like I said before, our canopy just, um, Sorry, trying to do this with one hand, I guess, ain't, ain't working. But anyway, nice positive latch on the canopy, I like it. So I did get a couple dirty smudge marks on it. We'll clean those off before we sticker them. Um, so let's take a look underneath. The pieces for me that were missing, um, right there, this is what we used. I just cut a piece of servo horn. Listen, how do you really approach this? The model as it stands is a little over 200 bucks. I'm not going to get really wrapped around 20 cents worth of pieces that weren't there. And I could put something on there that worked honestly just as well. That's where you got to become a modeler and a hobbyist and just find something that works. If it bothered you, I'm sure you could reach out to BitGo or to Dynam and they would take care of it. This really isn't a big deal. And you could see it tidied up my linkage. All my clevises, I did put little straps of fuel tubing on to make sure they're secured we also put the hinge tape the blendederm in there to make sure the stuff stays solid um, the tail wheel is fantastic up top um, with these flying braces there's a little slop to these i would have liked them to be a little tighter i did squeeze all my springs closed so that way i can't lose these things um, I think they look pretty cool on there. Like I said, I'd like them to be tighter like the bottom ones are. Um, but I just squeezed up all the springs. That way nothing ever comes loose or gets lost here. I think it's a nice feature and a nice touch. Um, again, blended derm on there. Scale flying wires. Otherwise, build time in this thing. I'm going to tell you about an hour and a half. Um, directions, 
I told you I would follow the directions to the T. They're colored. They started off decent. Um, after step five, it was kind of like they just decided not to write any more directions. So a lot of the stuff you had to figure out on a building scale of this model. I don't know if it's a beginner build model, but if you like to figure things out and tinker with stuff, guys, like I told you in the beginning, I love just having some time to put something together and tinker a little bit each day. I think this was a good model for that, not overwhelming time-wise. Like I said, maybe a total of an hour and a half, and that was with doing a couple little extras. So we are going to go through and we're going to throw the decals on this thing um and then we're going to actually i'm going to clear this thing over with some minwax i really think it'll help to really doll this thing up and give it a nice little shine so away we go all right guys another point to note on this model this is not a model that you are going to take the wings off and drag this thing to the flying field and put together there are too many pieces in the wing assembly one thing i will tell you once it's together it's together it is nice and firm um, i did put a little bit of hot glue on all the threads of those bolts just so i don't have to worry about them coming out but the flying wires are really a nice scale feature this thing at 51 inches can easily fit in the back of your car up in the front seat wherever you want to put it it's not too big that you can't carry it around fairly easily and get it in and out of a vehicle um, but you aren't going to get it apart but i still think it's very manageable in the size that it is just to take it out and go fly it somewhere All right, guys, last thing we're going to do is give this thing a nice little shiny coat of some clear gloss uh, Minwax Polycrylic.